welcome back, my little shalligators. Today, we're going to talk about our Lord and Savior, the Father, Son, and the Holy Fenty, Rihanna, because Forbes has declared her a billionaire. Apparently, she's the second richest woman like in, in the world, next to Oprah, I think. Now, Forbes, Forbes's math can be wrong on some celebrities, but like, <laughs> I don't think they're wrong about Rihanna. Obviously, we know her from her music career, but she's crushed it with Fenty. I'm wearing Fenty foundation right now. Ah, and her like lingerie line and just a bunch of diversification. She's got a business partner, this French dude, who's the second richest man in the world. And like, you've never even heard of him. It's just crazy how people at that level, they move in silence. Like they're not trying to brand themselves or make a name for themselves. They are stacking assets. So what does it take to get to this level? Well, I'm not a billionaire. But I am a millionaire and I can tell you some motivational hacks that I use. I can tell you something about brain chemistry and how we can sort of force our brain to overcome our own laziness and procrastination. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do to stay motivated when you're trying to pursue a goal, whether that goal is losing weight, writing a book, studying for school, just getting to the next level of your career. It all kind of comes from the same place. And I find that if you can, if you can focus on being excellent in one category that's kind of easy, and we'll talk about this more, it's a trickle down effect. So we're gonna break all of this down, but before we do, reminder to come on a trip with me. Speaking of Rihanna, who is from the Caribbean, we are gonna go to the Caribbean. I have partnered with Trova Trip for a getaway in February, February 2nd for five days, to the Dominican Republic. Um, there's a limited number of slots, I think we're, more than halfway full. Um, the trip will sell out. And so I really hope you guys can come. It's going to be five days of like island hopping, gosh, workshops that we're going to set up, dance lessons, cocktail lessons, and of course, hanging out with me like all day, every day. Like I'm not just going to swan in and be like, hi, bye. No, you're like incredibly stuck with me for five days. So it's going to be fantastic. So go ahead and click the link in the bio. You guys can pay over time. You can pay monthly. So it's definitely an affordable getaway. And we deserve some goddamn getaways because we're bad bitches. But how do we become bad bitches? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about. So Rihanna, God, do we not just love her? We, oh, I fucking love her. We've done a ton of videos on Rihanna from how to be alpha and feminine, what to do when guys are intimidated by you, how to kind of like fake confidence until you make it. Definitely check out my Rihanna playlist. I truly think the videos I do about her are some of the best videos that we have on here because she's just, She's exactly who we look up to. Like she is unbothered. No one gets under her skin. We have a video uh, that circles back to her on how to respond to criticism, how to deal with criticism and feedback. Cause she's like, like she just, she seems to float above so many problems that we encounter. So I asked you guys on my Instagram, follow me at channel XO, Cause I love it when you guys suggest topics and I always ask, what's the topic here with Rihanna? And <laughs> just, Hey, man, haters gonna hate, right? Haters just gonna hate. There was one response that was like, yeah, she's got all this money, but she doesn't have kids or a family to pass it on to. Let's take out the word but and maybe replace it with the word because. She has all this money because she doesn't have kids. Could that make a little bit more sense? She has all of the success because she doesn't have a husband. She has a life that is whole and amazing and high achieving because she has not put other people in front of her own needs. Does that sound correct to you? Because it sounds correct to me. Now listen, I'm not shitting on people with families and kids. Being a mom is the hardest job in the world. Hardest job in the world. I'm not doing it and I don't think I can do it and I don't want to. But there is so much messaging for women that you gotta have a husband. You're nothing without a man. You don't want kids, Ah, oh. Like there, that rhetoric is out there and it is carved into stone. I think it's literally one of the 10 commandments. Thou shalt birth, right? There is not enough rhetoric being like, hey, no, you can put your own dreams ahead. And if you want a baby when you're 55, you can acquire one, you can adopt one. No, you're gonna put your schedule, your goals, your heart, your motivation, your peace and your safety above a man's. Above doing things that deny who you are, dial down your dignity, make you look and feel crazy and desperate to hold on to a guy. There's not enough of that messaging out there. So sorry if that like makes you feel triggered, tough. We, women like me, who don't have a family, but who have an empire, we're triggered all the fucking time by contrary messages. So this video is for us. But even if you're a mamacita raising babies and doing that, again, hardest job in the world, my hat is all the way off to you. 
You're still going to be able to get something out of this because we all need to learn how to stay motivated. I mean, actually, if you're like caring for other little things, like little humans you have to keep alive, staying motivated is especially difficult because you're just torn in so many different directions and you only have so much emotional bandwidth and energy. So what, what is the root of achievement? You know, like I said, I'm not a billionaire, but I am very successful and I've been successful, honestly, from a young age. I published my first book at 23. I had my own TV show on MTV at 25. I was the editor in chief of a magazine, you know, not long after that. So I know what I'm talking about in terms of motivation. And the thing I'm gonna kind of reference in this video is writing my books because I wrote my books in about six weeks. And I'm a very fast writer because I'm a very, very disciplined one. I'm extremely organized and I just, I had a goal. And when I look back on the things I've achieved, they were all things that were extremely, extremely authentic to me. Authenticity, we talk about a lot on here. You should listen to my most recent episode of my podcast. And by the way, the podcast is on summer break for the next few weeks. I'm sorry, but I'm going to try to do more videos to make up for it. I, you know I still got you guys. Oh, and if you guys want a one-on-one -on -one session with me, head to my website, shallonlester.com, and click submit a question. Um, I'm really like, I go through this renaissance. Sometimes I don't like answering questions because I get like too codependent on you guys and I care too much. But I'm in this like phase where I'm like, I really, really enjoy it. I really enjoy connecting with you guys, so submit. Anyway. Authenticity, yeah, we talk about it a lot. And authenticity is the boldest thing there is because our authenticity very rarely aligns with other people's idea of how we should be. I mean, going back to like, I don't have kids or a husband, that does not align with what people, and I don't mean people who hate me, I mean people who love me, what they want from me. Don't you wanna settle down? Don't you want kids? I'm like, no, I fucking don't, man. Maybe my mind will change. Maybe it will. I don't know. My mind's changed about a lot of stuff. Look how many hair colors I've had in the last year. But for now, where I'm at and what I'm saying is my truth. It is my authenticity and it is my alignment. And in order to stay motivated and to achieve, you have got to be doing something you are aligned with. Now, here's a truism of achievement. While you are chasing this goal, it is not always going to be fun, nor will it be linear. We look at successful people and we assume, boo, it went like this. The trajectory went like this, right? And it doesn't. It goes all the way around. It's three steps forward and two steps back, but that's still forward progress. I always, always, always think it's very beneficial to read biographies or even autobiographies I think autobiographies are better because I want to hear the self-reporting of successful people. Even if there's someone who it's like, you don't want anything to do with Elon Musk. You don't even like him. It doesn't matter because it's important for us to get reminded that the path is never smooth. We look at the end result and we're like, man, they're just an overnight success. No, no. Now there are some people you might be thinking of, some celebrities, you're like, uh, no, these people are like, they just blew up. They went viral. Look at the D'Amelio sisters, like the who's who of mediocrity. I'm, I do not get it. They seem like fine. Actually, that song, Fuck Boy, that's a really good song. Have you heard it? Oh my God, it's really good. It's literally very, just, oh, love it. Anyway, but it's easy to look at them and be like, well, they had all this overnight success. Okay, but do they have longevity? We don't know. There is no one else like them. They're on the frontier. I'm a YouTuber, same thing. I don't know any retired YouTubers, like at a rest home. Where do we go in five years? Who knows? So don't look at people who are still in this like supernova and be like, well, that's, that's what I wanna be. I just wanna have overnight success. No shit, bitch, don't we all? I wanna wake up tomorrow with a six pack. Do you think that's likely? No, okay. And do you think that is how the majority of successful people found success? Just overnight success. It was just handed to them. It just happened. No. Success is the intersection of preparation and luck. Yeah, there is going to be luck. Right place, right time. This person stuck up a conversation. Oh my God, turns out they know the CEO of this company. You want to refer, bah. But preparation fuels luck. Fortune favors the bold. And the bold are emboldened by that preparation. And preparation comes back to alignment. I wrote two books. Uh, one was a teen fiction novel called Hot Mess, and the other one was a memoir collection called X's and O's. And after X's and O's, my agent's like, why don't you write another one? Why don't, why don't you write another fiction book? And I was like, uh-huh, yes. I'm gonna write a fiction novel. It was gonna be called The Afterlife of the Party. 
And I, so you write a book by outlining. People are like, what's the secret? Is it like whiskey? And I'm like, no, it's outlining. They're like, no, but is it like the right pens? You're like, it's outlining, okay? Nobody likes to outline. I actually love it, like a geek out on outlining. I'm like, mm, a bullet point, Roman numerals. But most people don't, and that's why most people can't finish the books they start, because they're just like, I don't know, I'll just start writing. I'm like, okay, like, are you just gonna start like throwing ingredients in a pot and just hope it comes out as a gourmet meal? Or are you gonna maybe follow a recipe? I digress. So I wrote my books very, very, very quickly, like I said, um, because I outlined them and I just plugged it and chugged it. And those books were super authentic to me. I loved it. I loved writing them. It was fun. I even thinking about it, like I'm writing three new mini books right now that are going to be out hopefully soon for you guys to download. Um, they're going to be about Tinder, first dates and heartbreaks. So kind of like little like quick and dirty to the point guides for you. But I bring this up because I'm writing again and it just feels, I feel again, aligned. But when I was trying to write the afterlife of the party, I just, I couldn't even outline it. Like I hated it. The only thing I enjoyed was picking the names of the characters. I named them like all after hockey players. And I just, I was like, this, this sucks. I hate doing this. I hate this. And I had to accept that I hated it. And that was very difficult because, well, I've written two books and I loved it. So why would this one just fill me with so much dread and like procrastination. I was dragging my feet and I was missing a deadline. It's because I was no longer in alignment. The season for me writing those books changed. I'm now back in the season where I want to write. But when I was trying to write Afterlife, I wasn't there. And had I tried to like force myself through it, it would have been a shitty book. I would have hated the whole thing. And if you hate doing it, well, why are you doing it? And so I pulled back and I acknowledged that to myself. I am not in alignment doing this. I say this to you because yes, whatever it is you're chasing is going to get hard. We're going to talk about that in just a second, but it's going to be impossible and agonizing if it is not in alignment. If you don't want to be a lawyer, don't go to law school. Don't go. Your mom wants you to go. All your friends are going, well, it's gonna make a good stable job, but you hate it. What's in alignment for you? Maybe working at Cinnabon at the airport is more in alignment for you. I fucking love it. I love cinnamon. I love the smell of it. I like talking to people. I'm happy. Great. There is no wrong path. There is only an authentic or an inauthentic path. That's it. So everything you're doing and before you embark on this goal and while you're in this goal, ask yourself, is this the path of alignment? Not is it fun. Is it easy? Is it just like the hours are flying by? Mm -mm. Is this in alignment? And again, I want you to listen to my last episode of the podcast because we talked about burnout and how to avoid burnout. And this, we, I get a little bit more granular in different ways in the podcast. Oh, podcast is called Girl on Top. Check it out. I feel like I'm so spacey today. I'm so sorry. I'm really tired. And, you know, I've told you guys, this is like my summer of slacking because burnout was like coming fast and hard for me. I was at the point where I'm like, I just want to quit this career. I don't want to do this at all. And I'm like, that's not true. Like that's, I know that that's not true. That's like a fear brain talking. So I have to recognize what that is and pull back and refine. But we're going to talk about burnout a little later. One thing I want you to realize is that the middle is sticky. The sticky ass middle. When we start something, when we announce it, oh, we get all this praise. And I, definitely caution you not to tell too many people about your goal. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to write a book. Okay. Tell the people who you love and trust, but there a tipping point can occur. And this is true psychologically where we front load the congratulations and that if we get too much like high-fiving at the beginning when we announce it, we are less likely to follow through because we've already had that dopamine rush. And it's like, yeah, I told everyone I'm going back to school and they high five me and everyone's excited. And I'm like, no, also I'll, I'll sign up, I'll register, like, I don't know, maybe next week or something. Hustlers really do move in silence because that keeps you aligned. So try not to front load the congratulations. But still, when we start something, when we decide, we make up our mind, it's exciting, right? When we reach our goal, that's also exciting. It's the middle. Joel Osteen has an amazing podcast about this called Faith in the Middle. And it's it's really motivating because it acknowledges what we feel and it makes us realize that this is actually how everyone feels, right? Look, the Olympics are on right now. Don't you think 
that it's fabulous to win that gold medal. It was so exciting when they were 11 and starting to do like fencing or whatever. But it's those days when the alarm goes off at five and you're like, fuck. The goal is sort of out of reach. The beginning is way in the rear view and you're just in the middle. How do you stay motivated in that sticky middle? Well, let's assume that you're still in alignment, right? That's like, no, I really love this. Let's go. In order to stay motivated, obviously the first thing you want to do is set a goal, right? And again, it's a goal that aligns to you. It's a goal that you genuinely care about. I want you to fully inhabit what it's going to look like when you reach that goal. And I want you to write it down. I'm a big creative visualization person. We have a whole playlist on manifestation and visualization. And I go into more detail on that. But basically you want to write something down in present tense. This is very important. Present tense. I weigh 125 pounds. I can deadlift 250. I'm a size four. If that's, you know, if that's your goal, whatever. And I want you to go into that and feel what that's like. That is going to cement the mind-body connection, okay? That's going to boost manifestation through the roof. And I understand that like, if you're looking at a big goal, I've lost 50 pounds, you get overwhelmed, right? Okay, okay. So dial it down. What can your brain latch onto in terms of belief? Well, I can't have 50 pounds, that's, that's gonna be impossible, that's impossible. Okay, it's 25 pounds, does that seem impossible? Yeah, no, no, I can't do that. Okay, how about 10? How about five? How about three? No, I can envision losing three pounds. Fantastic, great. I want you to write that narrative. I woke up this morning, I'm on the scale, I'm looking down and I'm three pounds lighter. My pants are looser. I have more energy. I'm so proud of myself. And you're gonna start to feel that, right? Because where you are is a place of cognitive dissonance, meaning what I want and what I assume is like possible or butting up against each other. You are also in a prefrontal cortex shutdown. What does this mean? What are you, what are you talking about cortexes? Okay, prefrontal cortex, right? So your prefrontal cortex, I'm sorry, willpower breaks down and you start to procrastinate when your rational brain butts up against your emotional brain. Think about it. I know I have to make my bed, but I don't fucking want to. I know I need to go to the gym, but I just want to sit here and binge watch Shaws of Sunset, okay? This is rational, I need to do this, versus emotional. I don't want to. The way out of this actually is called, um, it's called like brain activation. Basically, it's kind of a dumb name. But what it means is you have to refire that prefrontal cortex. You have to get it going again. Because the prefrontal cortex is your decision-making core. We talked before about the prefrontal and how when you are when you are with someone you are attracted to, literally that thing, that part of your brain that makes rational decisions shuts off. It shuts, lust shuts it off. So that you're like, I am going to triple text you. I am going to suck your dick after one martini. I am going to fly to wherever you are and stalk you. Cause your cortex is like, bye. <laughs> you know, there's no more rationality. And when you shut down rationality, all you're left with is emotion. And so you shut down rationality. It's fuck it, I'm just gonna lay on the couch. I want to, I don't wanna do this. I'm afraid of going to the gym. I'm too fat and it's never gonna work. Blah, blah, blah. It's a spiral and you don't have rationality to pull you out. What do you mean you're afraid of the gym? Go for five minutes and you can do anything for five minutes. I could waterboard you for five minutes. You'll survive. But when that shuts down, we're just left with emotion, spirals, anxiety, procrastination, laziness, and therefore misery. How do we get this back? Okay. Well, it's a truism of this reactivation that it's going to take more energy to restart that cortex than to keep it going. It's like a chainsaw. It's like, rah, rah, rah. Once you like do those few pulls, that thing's on. You don't have to keep pulling it, right? Same with a lawnmower, whatever. Whatever large, dangerous piece of machinery resonates for you. So know, know this, be like, okay, I'm gonna have to use some energy to refire this cortex and get the fuck back on the horse and cowboy up. How do you do that? Physical activity is super, super helpful. Um, I've, I find literally just taking a walk around the block I mean, you don't need to do like a Spartan race, just walking around the block, it gets your serotonin up. It gets the blood pumping. It just, it really does work. If you can do 10 jumping jacks, that works too. This, when we're in that prefrontal shutdown and we're like, oh, I can't do it. 
I can't do anything. Do you ever get like so bored over summer break you don't want anything to do? Or like so bored at your office, like your boss is out and you're like, I'm literally just sitting here and I'm bored. But then that boredom sort of shuts off and then you're like afraid to have anything to do. Do you know what I mean? I used to get like that. And it's like, no, I don't, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to do anything. This is exactly what that is. The cortex is down, you're pure emotion, and you have absolutely stagnated. So doing even five minutes of something physical is going to refire that. And then you're like, okay, I'm back. I have told you guys that one of my keystone habits for success, making my bed every day. Making my bed every day, rain or shine, no matter what. My cleaning lady didn't make it right. It's something that I need to do. It's not the right pillowcase. It's not the right, it's not the right pillowcase. It doesn't matter doesn't matter. Anyway, I make my bed every day no matter what. And I find that once I make my bed, I'm like, I can pick up my bathroom. I should probably just fold the laundry. I'm already going. But to like, be like, oh, I don't want to fucking make my bed and put the pillows on. And just, but once I can do that chainsaw rip and get that activation going, it's a machine that does kind of go of itself. And then, oh, I'm doing the dishes. I'm unloading the dishwasher. And now I have a space that's clean. My mind is clean. I have less anxiety. Okay. Now when I look at my to-do list, I'm like, okay, I can do this. Willpower is something you simply decide. Motivation is something you create in your mind. And the way you create it is by telling yourself, I got this. I got this. I got this. That activates the rational brain because the emotional brain's like, you don't got this. You, <laughs> if you sit down with that outline for that book, you're going to melt it. Yeah, I don't want to look at that blank page. You're going to have to make Roman numerals. It's just a spiral. But if you can give your brain an antidote to that cognitive dissonance, that misery, right? And say, no, we, <laughs> we got this. We got this. Your brain wants a way out of that spiral, right? Don't we always want a life raft out of our spirals? And if you're like, well, I don't know that I do got this. Well, didn't you just make your bed? Didn't you put your laundry away? You could do that. Why do you think you can't do anything bigger than that? Well, I don't know. I've never done something that big. Well, have you ever seen a million dollars in real life? No. Do you think a million dollars doesn't exist? Of course you think it exists. You know it exists. So why is this different? Just because you haven't experienced something doesn't mean you're never going to experience it. And you can create that reality whenever you decide. But this is all very esoteric, right? This is all very cerebral and existential. What are like actual steps? Okay, I have found, and studies also confirm this, it's like a big school of thought, that focusing too much on your goal actually works against you because it can become overwhelming and you can talk yourself out of it. If you have 50 pounds to lose, yeah, you wanna make the vision board with the great bodies and, and envision and habit. You want to go to that place, that end result place in your mind, but then you wanna leave. You don't want to stay too long there. Why? Because you want to stay focused on the steps. You want to stay focused on the steps. Any big goal, any big achievement is made up of small achievements, small goals, small steps, right? Look at losing weight. You don't go to the gym once, work out for eight hours and boom, you're there. Nope. It's the sticky middle. It's every day you're making the healthy breakfast. You're choosing almond milk instead of whole milk in your latte. You're walking to work instead of just driving, right? small things. One thing you can do is commit not to the goal, but to the steps. Going back to this example, one of my goals is to keep my house neat and beautiful. This is not just like vanity. My mind does not run well and therefore nothing in my life runs well if my space is cluttered. I've talked about how much I am inspired by Kim Kardashian's like weird cervix shaped house. How it's like plain because it's like not stimulating for her. And she said that's why she likes it. That it's like her brain is already so stimulated all the time that to have a very clean, quiet environment calms her anxiety, keeps her motivated, right? It's less just noise. I'm the same way. I have to have my space looking very nice all the time. But if I tell myself, you're cleaning your house every day, it's like, I'm what? I don't wanna clean my house every day. I don't wanna, what? That goal is too much. You have to keep the house perfect. The house needs to look perfect all the time. But instead, I commit to the steps. I make my bed every day. I unload the dishwasher within an hour of it getting done. I don't leave cups on my nightstand. Okay, those are bite-sized. I can get my head around that. All right, yeah, I don't leave cups on my nightstand. I'm just not one of, I'm not one of those nightstand cup people. That's just not who I am. I'm a bed maker. 
I can commit to those steps and therefore the goal manifests itself. Let's look at weight loss. Yes, you wanna focus on that great body, but focus on falling in love with the steps. And again, you might have to break this down really, really tiny in order to latch onto it. That's okay. You can always dial it up, but you don't wanna burn out. You don't wanna to commit too hard. I'm gonna do CrossFit five days a week. You probably aren't, right? But you can maybe commit to just putting on your gym clothes four days a week. Yeah, no, I can, I can do that until you feel comfortable in your gym clothes. You don't feel weird. You don't feel like an imposter at the gym. Okay, I'm gonna to commit to walking in and walking around the gym three times a week for two weeks just to get just to get an idea just see the lay of the land okay I can do that then you're going to dial that up a notch I'm going to commit to five minutes of exercise 10 squats 10 push-ups 10 sit-ups and I'm done okay you know what you're doing the chainsaw and now it's going I guarantee you you're going to get to the gym you're going to do 10 squats 10 whatever and you're going to be like I can do another set yeah, I can do that. You know, maybe I'll hop on the elliptical for like five minutes. See, the motivation has already started. You needed that big push of activity, that big push of energy to restart that prefrontal cortex. But once you did, you're off. You're off to the races. The lawnmower is going. The chainsaw is roaring to life because you're focusing on the steps. Get as granular and as tiny as you need to. If you have to read a whole book, be like, I can, I'm committing to five solid minutes. Okay, I bet you'll read more than five minutes, but even if you don't, that's all right. That's all right. This is going to help you avoid burnout. And when you feel like you're burning out, go back to this granularity. I'm just so fucking sick of working out, dude. I just, I, if I have, if that fucking alarm goes off one more time at six, I just, I don't even want to do this anymore. Great. Take a day off. Say, great. Tomorrow, I'm going to go to the gym for five minutes, not an hour and a half like I normally do. And just, I'm giving myself the elasticity to come back into that alignment. I'm not forcing this down my own throat to the point that I hate it. And now I've told myself that a goal that I might actually really want is something I despise. I don't even want it. Yeah, you do. But we have to pull back. The most successful, the most motivated people in the world rest. They rest. I am not built for rest. I'm not. I will run myself to death like a racehorse. And that's why I have my summer of slacking because I could feel a breakdown coming. And I mean, physically, my body has broken down. I think I've told you this, like I've been sick to the point of hospitalizations three times this year or this summer. Um, I, I didn't go to the hospital, but I should have. <laughs> uh, no, I went twice, whatever. The point is like I, everything, everything in my life was like, stop, stop. When my body was like, we're done. We're done for, we're done for now. Okay. You need to get in bed and you need to lay there for five days. Like, I don't want to. I know you don't want to, but this is the natural rest. We look at anything else, a, an athlete, a car, a racehorse, a natural racehorse. We understand they need rest. Well, of course they need to rest. But when it comes to us, no, 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 no. Because the fear is we're never going to fire that chainsaw up again. Right? We turn it off. Fuck. It's never, gonna, how are we going to do this? But now we have a strategy. We know what it's going to take to fire it up. It's going to take that push of effort, but then it's going to be okay. That's all. It's just the ripping off the bandaid. All right, now we're good. It's going to take staying focused on the steps and not just the goal. Okay. It's going to maybe take refining and getting granular. I can't work out for an hour. I'm so over this. Can I work out for 10 minutes? Yeah, I can work out for 10 minutes. Okay. It's going to take not front loading that applause not overly inhabiting the end result, but still making sure the end result is in alignment and you are doing this for the right reasons. Because let me tell you something, there is no amount of cheering at the finish line, prizes, money, money is not a motivator, that is going to make an inauthentic goal worth it. It just, it just won't. And if something is authentic, there's no amount of hardship that's gonna dissuade you from it. You might get battered, you might be in the sticky middle being like, fuck, but you are gonna have your eyes on that alignment and the way to stay in alignment and the way to know, because like I said, sometimes you just don't know. It's like, fuck man, you're in the middle. It's like, do I even want to write this book? Like, do I even, do I even like this? Do I even wanna to go to business school? Like, what am I doing? You know how you know? You get in alignment in other ways. You have that perfect nine-year-old 
day. I feel like we've talked about the nine-year-old day a lot lately because we talked about burnout and stuff. If you don't know, my the perfect nine-year-old day is my trick for getting back into alignment because we need to reconnect with who we are and what we love in a vacuum before society told us that wasn't cool before you know our friends were like um you need to stop wearing orange pants and rainbow shoelaces guys are never gonna like you and I'm like, that's literally what I wore halfway through high school and they were right guys didn't like me they were right but I didn't care that was alignment for me and I drifted away from that my point is we got to get back to that what is the perfect day you would have had when you were nine years old what would you have done go to a museum ice skate bake banana bread make up a song for your dog do crazy hair and makeup what what was it crafts what was it do that you don't have to spend a whole day doing it commit to 30 minutes a week 30 minutes a week and they're fun it's fun i do you know what i did the other day i went and bought a bunch of stickers do you not love stickers i used to be very into stickers when i was like seven and i like I went to Michael's and I got all these stickers and I got a piece of paper and I just put the stickers on things. And I'm like, this was a complete waste of money. Like I spent like $25 on stickers. I'm, I'm a clown. Am I a clown though? Because afterwards I just felt delighted. I felt like I'd done something like sort of naughty. Like what was I doing? I just bought a bunch of stickers. It's crazy, right? But it was that ripple of delight I felt when I was a kid. Like this is just ducky. I just love doing this. I also went and got a bunch of school supplies. I'm not in school, but I was like, I want some Lisa Frank, you know, like folders. And I bought them like, I'm delighted. I'm just, del I'm just tickled to death. And that reignited the passion within me. It reminded me, it gave me like a taste of that alignment of just being delighted. And then I was able to look at other things in my life. And I'm like, this does not delight me. This does, it's, it's tough, but at the core, no, I, I do still feel that delight. I love doing it. But this thing over here, no, this person, this scenario, this interaction, this doesn't delight me. And I might not have known that had I not spent $25 on stickers. So was that wasted money and time? Was I a clown for doing that? Or was I realigning myself, right? It sounds silly, but these are the habits of effective people. Play and rest. I really encourage you guys to read the book Essentialism. It's like we did it as our book club selection. There's a link down here. You can download it or, or pick it up. It's great because it reminds you to funnel things down. What's important? How to say no? How to set boundaries? What's your priority? Singular. What's your singular priority? Okay, we do that. What's next on the list? It's just really helped me refine. It also gives you sort of practicalities about what I call like mental organization. <clears throat> like I'm a very organized person. I have labels on like everything. I have labels on my drawers, like tighter jeans, looser jeans for like when I'm thin or fat, like loungewear, bras, underwear. Why do I do this? I have labels all over. There's words everywhere in my house. So I don't have to keep making that choice. Uh, where the fuck do these pillowcases go? I don't know. No, I choose once. I don't have to think about it again. That decision has been asked and answered and I can use that mental bandwidth for something that's important. I don't have to motivate myself to put my bras in the right drawer. It's already been done for me. And so therefore, because we're only allotted a certain amount of willpower every day, we are, that, that currency has not been spent on something that doesn't matter. I'm using it for the heavy lifting. No, we're outlining in another book. I didn't, you, I didn't waste it on the laundry. So get your life as organized as possible. Also, the book talks about how to organize your priorities and your rubric in terms of business or anything. I have I have like metrics in terms of what I will and won't accept in business. Like a opportunity has to make me 80% of my contracted rate, has to take me less than 30 minutes, and it has to be something you guys will actually enjoy and that I would enjoy. It has to be on brand, basically. And so opportunities come to me and I'm like, nope, that's not on brand. Sorry. And it's just, it's already asked and answered. I don't, oh, hem and haw, I'm sorry. Oh, don't take it personally. It's like, I'm sorry, it just, it, what does the contract say? Oh, what does is, what is my metrics say? No, I'm sorry. I have it for socialization. It doesn't deplete me. It doesn't physically harm me. Like going out to the woods and doing a bunch of drugs or even like going camping will physically fuck me up because I don't sleep well when I sleep in the woods like a, like a bear. So I say, no, oh, I'm sorry. No, this doesn't hit the metric. Sorry, can't do it. Again, then we're saving that emotional currency, that mental bandwidth for the heavy lifting. So when I need to get something done, 
I got the power, I got the motivation. I've streamlined everything else in my life to funnel down my motivation to use it where I need to. The bottom line is reaching a goal is tough. I mean, it just is. Like we can we can streamline as much as we want. It is going to come down to sheer motherfucking grit. Just grit. What is grit? It's tenacity, it's bounce back. It's when you get knocked down, do you get back up again? Successful people have grit. They're gritty people. You look at Rihanna and it's it's like, oh, oh, it was hard for her to become a billionaire. Do you know what happened with her accountant? You know the song, Bitch Better Have My Money? Her accountant stole from her, like $10 million. Like he completely fucked her, told her she could afford this house that she had just bought that she absolutely couldn't afford, took all the profits from this tour. I mean, tours are grueling, grueling. And for someone to take your money, like that was really rough. And I'm sure she had moments where she's like, this is, it's, I'm done, man. This is over. You taken not just my money, you took like my life force. You took my two years of my life. That was, that was my blood that I earned. Look at what she went through with Chris Brown. You think she didn't have a moment? She's like, I don't, I just can't, I can't get back up after this. Like I can't extricate myself from this toxic, hideous relationship, right? Everyone has those moments. Do not for a second, tell yourself that successful people don't have them. They have more than anyone. They have more dark nights of the soul than someone who does work at Cinnabon at the airport. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but they have gone through some shit. And you know what, again, you're probably thinking, well, there's some people who just have it handed to them. Cool, call me in five years. Where are they? And you know what, they're lucky. Great, they're just plain lucky. Maybe you don't have something handed to you. I didn't. I didn't have anything handed to me. And working in magazines with these like beautiful girls that went to boarding school in Switzerland and they just like grew up rich and like their dad knows the publisher. So yeah, like I'm just like the accessories editor now. And just like I get sent like rings and stuff. Yeah, honey, I know what that's like. I know what it's like to look at them and be like, <laughs> I've been eating ramen for three weeks because I'm poor and your dad pays your rent and you are vacationing in St. Bart's, but cool. Yeah, it's not fair. You know what? Tough shit. Welcome to the real world. Get the concept out of your head that fair exists at all. It is not something that exists. Equality actually doesn't exist either. I mean, in terms of achievement. Well, I work harder. I should be farther ahead. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, bitch. Like, that's not how it works. And if you latch onto this unfairness, thing, all you're gonna do is cultivate bitterness. And guess where you, you, you've you used your mental currency now? There. Not for achievement. Your willpower? Your mental bandwidth? Spent on this bullshit. Great, good job. Gritty people are like, nope, it's not fair. It doesn't matter. I'm picking myself back up. I don't need to look at what they're doing. I don't need to look at how easy it is for them because I can acknowledge nothing's easy for, you know, people have their own struggles. We can't walk a mile in their shoes and know it, but I acknowledge that people have their own issues, you know? And if they don't, hey man, good for them. That's just not my reality. And I can get pissed about it or I can put one foot in front of the other and achieve. And that is what I have done my entire life. My entire life. The deck has been stacked against me. People have had hateful things to say. You're not going to make it. Why do you think this says revenge? That's what that means. It's not like revenge against a guy I could give a shit. No, it's revenge for people who said I couldn't do something. That's my motivation. Maybe it's, yeah, it should be a positive thing. To me, that is positive. Who cares? Turn bullshit into fuel. Do it. Get the concept of fairness out of your head. Focus on what you're doing. Focus on your alignment, okay? Because when you're aligned and when you enjoy this, it's not gonna matter that someone's a little further down the road. Don't compare your start to someone else's middle. There is, there is nothing like that. Don't get caught up, I should have started this five years earlier. No, everything is right on schedule. It is, it, I swear to God it is. What we view as a setback might be a setup. We don't know. We don't know the divine plan, the universe, God, whatever you wanna call it. I believe that there is one. And I believe that plan clicks into action. It becomes reality when we put in the work too. Put our yes with God's yes, the universe's yes, manifestations yes. They're all these beings, this, whatever, whatever name, God, let's call it God, wants you to succeed. I got this plan, I got this thing, I got this person, I got this achievement, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You gotta activate it though, come on, come on, come on. Rev that chainsaw up, let's go, bitch. 
They're waiting. Are you going to rev that chainsaw up or are you not? Things will pass you by. If not, that's fine. Enjoy Cinnabon. That's not the kind of people we are, though. We're gritty enough. We're tenacious enough. We're brave enough to fire up that emotional chainsaw. I want to know what you guys have to say about Rihanna. Uh, of course, only if it's positive, because I love her, and I don't want to hear people shit on her, because I think she's fantastic. Yay, Re! Tell me, also, put down here in the comment the thing you are having trouble with motivating for let's all collab let's talk about this you guys give each other such fantastic advice so really like if you're having trouble like putting those gym shoes on and getting to the gym you've plateaued someone's got some advice for you if you've outlined the book but you don't know how to get started someone's got advice for you if you're studying for the LSAT and you want to tear your hair out Kim Kardashian can understand that like <laughs> someone's got advice for you let's all collab we're here for each other this really is a sisterhood I'll see you later shalligators 